Hey guys, today I'm going to go over all the different connectors and the, uh, the crimping tools used for them and uh, what you need for your Holly EFI installation. You don't need all of this stuff, I'm just trying to go over every little nook and cranny so that, uh, so that I answer some of the questions that seem to be coming up a lot. Uh, a lot of people don't know what crimper to use, what terminal to use, what goes where, what's a pin, what's a socket, what's a, you know, so uh, what's a receptacle. So what I, uh, what I figured I would do is I'd go step by step kind of over each connector and each crimper used in the terminal, the seal that it needs, um, and how they, they go together. So first thing we're going to start with is the Metropack crimpers or the Metropack connectors. So these are what is on your holly harness this is a uh, a modern gm uh, connector so these are used for on your holly harness like the uh, ignition plug the injector plug the coils uh, the, uh, just about every single thing on it you know map sensor or the uh, uh the um cam and crank on an ls is a metro pack they come like this uh, and so so metro pack is, is is the most common that you're gonna that you're gonna deal with in a holly harness and then the next most common is the gt150 which is right here so you got a three pin for pressure transducers uh and some of the throttle position sensors uh this is the little pigtail if you've ever bought a holly pressure transducer you see this uh brandon at low dollar uh, motorsports all his pressure transducers come with the uh the nicer lipped plug that goes with them and then you've got your your seals and then your terminals so i'm going to start here so first there's obviously two halves to this connector right so you've got a, a male and a female right so um no matter what anybody tells you that it just doesn't really work, right? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? This doesn't work. You gotta get the male in there. You know what I mean? Two males just don't work at all. But, you know, I mean, at least we can, two females at least isn't terrible. You know what I mean? It's just kind of, but it doesn't work. So anyway, you've got a, uh, you've got a receptacle, right? It's the hole receives and the plug which plugs the hole so uh, if you have to make any connections on sorry my left hand is like useless so if you have to make any connections uh, here you're going to be using metro pack uh, pins and seals so the this one the female right again this is the male right female female and male work together you don't want to put this this bad boy you don't want to put male on male you know what i mean it just doesn't work so this is so, so no matter what i mean we're not you can't identify as whatever gender you want here they gotta go like that or like that so uh this is push to seat all your standard metro pack stuff is push to seat which means you'd crimp your wire and your wire gets crimped there and then the seal goes right sorry again my left hand is useless goes right there and the wire is inside of there and then you crimp the seal okay and then when it, once this is crimped it slides up in there and you're done you'll hear a positive click and that positive click is it might be a little hard to see the positive click is that tang right there engaging the body so i always like to give everything a tug test once it clicks in uh, give it a tug you know make sure she's in there so that's metro pack the recommended crimper for metro pack is these um holly sells these a lot of companies different a lot of different companies sell these these are ratcheting these are about $120, $130, depending on where you buy them from. A lot of you guys don't want to go out and spend $130 on crimpers. 
The substitute for this, and, and you're going to see me come back to these two crimpers right here, uh, and I'll put, I'll put a link to where you can buy both of these crimpers, um, both of these crimpers. I'll put a link to where you can buy both of these crimpers um, underneath the video. So these are Sargent, these are like the, their economy crimper. Um, they're, they're not, I mean, they are economical. They're about $35, $40 a piece. And they will do a variety of terminals. And you're going to see that we come back to these quite a bit because they will literally do a variety of terminals. Now, again, if you're just, you know, a hot rodder who's trying to buy, put your plug and play harness in and you want to add a couple things here and there, you probably don't want to drop $130, $140 on a set of crimpers. Your economy sergeant crimpers that are linked below uh, will do the job uh, rather well. So you basically have a medium and then you've got a small, right? It's almost like somebody was political when they made these, you know? You know what I mean? Democrats and the Republicans. These probably don't work. Um, but uh, that's a, it's a joke. Lighten up, right? So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, the, uh, there's, a, there's a small and then there's a medium here with these. So it, it really, you know, as you can see in the jaws in both of them, um, there's different, different sizes and it really depends upon which terminal you're crimping and what size wire you're crimping in said terminal. So I'm not going to get into use exactly this jaw and, and whatnot, but I will say that when you're crimping the seal on a metro pack, you want to use this location right here, right there. So you want to use uh, either or, so it depends on, on, on the, the gauge of wire you're using or the, or the size of the, uh, the weather seal, but you're going to want to use the larger of the two. And same thing goes with these, if, you know, with your, with your seal. Um, you're going to use the, the larger circular hole as opposed to smaller hole that's actually designed for crimping the wire to the terminal, not the actual uh, weather seal. So, so, Metropack, Holly sells these, a lot of people sell them, um, but Holly sells them as like little kits, you know, so like if, if this is a camera or crank or something like that, you got a three pin, it comes with all the associated seals, the little lock in here, and then three terminals. Um, a lot of different companies sell them, Joel at Racepec sells them, KSV Looms, um, they're another company that sell all this stuff. I, I buy a lot of stuff from, from both of those companies. Uh, both great companies to deal with. Holly, another great company to deal with to get the stuff out to you fast. So that's Weather Pack, or I'm sorry, Metro Pack. Let's push that out of the way. Metro Pack is done. Let's look at GT150. So your pressure transducers, your intake air temp sensors, your coolant temp sensors, uh, a, a lot of your uh, all your pressure transducers, just about all your pressure transducers are going to be this, right? So this is a three pin. Um, they come with a pigtail when you buy them, like I said, from Holly, or they come with this if you buy them from, from low dollar. Uh, the pigtails, I've got a box full of these. I don't use them, um, but keep one for reference, right? Because when you're wiring up a pressure transducer, 99% of the time, unless you bought some weird oddball pressure transducers, uh, you've got your sensor ground, you've got your 5 volt right here in orange, and then down here in pink is your signal. So if you want a nicer, cleaner installation, take this out of the box, um, keep it, and keep it for reference so you can just spot check to make sure that you didn't shove these uh, terminals in the wrong hole, you know? So you shove it in the wrong hole and you're going to have a bad time, all right? Stuff's just not going to work. So... GT150 connectors. So the terminals for these, and again, if you buy these from, from one of the vendors I said earlier, like Holly or KSV Looms or Racepec, uh, they have, they come prepackaged, right? So you'd, you'd get your coolant temp sensor, plug, the lock, the lock that goes back here, the seal, and then some terminals, right? So same thing as the, uh, the Metropack. 
You've got your weather seal that lays up in there, just like so. Hopefully you can see that. And, um, and then your wire gets crimped here, and then your weather seal gets crimped there. So pretty self-explanatory, but um, I, you know, again, the crimpers used uh, typically are the red-handled economy crimpers. I think these are 1026, I believe. Don't quote me on the part number. I think these are the 1026s and these are 1028s. Either way, I'll link them below. Um, I buy these from Joel at, at RaceBec. Um, so, GT150, that's them. Again, these crimpers work for GT150. Uh, we're going to skip over this one for a second. We're going to come to these. These are GT150.2, okay? So they look rather similar, but the difference is, is that these, unlike these, it can be hard to see, but these right here, GT150.2 and then GT150 here, these are pull to seat, okay? So with a GT150, you're taking the terminal and you're shoving it in here. You're pushing, right, push. Goes in there that way. This, you'd crimp your wire on this, you'd shove your wire through here, through the front of it, and you pull the wire back here and you pull to seat these, right? So these are pull to seat GT150.2. These are for your, um, the new MSD CDI coils. This is for the pro stock style TPS from Holly. And then this connector here is for your IGN-1A smart coils. So if you have to make your own harness or you're doing something with these connectors, remember that these are pull to seat. So if you build your whole harness starting at, you know, whatever your, your common junction point, right, to build a sub harness, remember that the wire has to go through here first, strip it, then crimp it, then pull the wire back through. Or you do like I do, you cut all your wire to whatever length, close to whatever lengths you want, strip them, crimp them, shove them through, and then build these as individual leads to your junction point, and then cut the length and make them work. That's GT150.2. Um, I'm gonna be moving a little bit quicker here because this video will take 30 minutes, 45 minutes if I don't. Next, uh, this is for a smart wire. So these connectors, uh, smart wire and the MSD uh, Pro 600. So these right here, very similar design. The difference is, is they don't use a weather seal, okay? So again, you're gonna strip the wire uh, 3 16 of an inch, so that the wire will lay up in here in this in this cavity here, crimp it, you'll wind up using the blue handles for these, and then this is gonna go into the jacket of the wire for uh, retention. And then these are push to seat, okay? You push them in from the backside. If you have to do these, be cautious of how far you push them in. Just push them in very lightly until they click and then stop. Don't keep going, otherwise you're gonna have to disassemble this and uh, it's a big pain in the ass. So anyway, that's them. So again, these are gonna keep riding with us all the way along down the, down the train here, right? Right down the Trump train, right? Eh. Uh, so, the economy crimpers again, so far, can do with caution and with with care every uh, terminal that we have we have looked at. All right. Next, we got a EV1 style injector connectors. Right. So this is your billet atomizers, your Siemens Decas, your Holly 120s, 160s. Um, lots of low impedance injectors. This is pretty much what every car I work on comes in with. These are these can be a little tricky because it depends on where you buy your your connectors from. Some of them are pull to seat, just like these GT150.2s, where you have to you know cut or strip the wire, crimp it, and then slide it through. Um, but some of them are push to seat, which you would take your terminal, and you see that there's two. You can see it. You can, sorry, one. See that little wing sticking out right there. Maybe with my hand on the background, you might be able to see it. That little wing sticking there, that's your retention, 
right? Right there. And then this is what actually clips into the injector, uh, male spades that are sticking up out of the injector and uh, makes contact. So again, injector, EV1 injector, depending on who you buy these from, I buy these from KSV Loom. Let me roll it over. I buy these from KSV Loom. Uh, these are made for, you know, 20 gauge. I've run up to 18 gauge Tevzel with them. That's typically with big bell atomizers, they get 18 gauge Tevzel. Um, but, uh, but again, you can use your economy crimpers. I keep going back to these. And again, we're going to be able to cover 80% of what we talk about here. 80, well, you'll, you'll be able to cover probably about 100% of your, your typical installs with these two crimpers, right? So, um, you know, you don't have to be, you don't have to invest a fortune into covering your basic, you know, terminals. So there's your EV1s. Get those out of the way. All right. Next is the Holly EFI plugs, right? So these are the same plugs that are used on Holly's ECU, Holly's Pro Dash, um, and then Mtron used them. Motec uses them. I don't know who started it, Motec or Holly or whoever, but Motec uses them. Um, uh, there's quite a few companies out there that use these, these, this style connector. Okay. So the pins come in two different sizes. All right. So one pin is designed for 20 to 22 gauge and another pin is designed for 16 to 18 gauge. Now, I don't know if you can see the difference in the tangs sticking up, but this one here Oh, it rolled. My left hand's useless again, so bear with me here. So the tangs are a good bit smaller here than they are on here. This pin right here, and when you buy them from Holly, they come labeled. Oh, let me go grab a, a bag of them. Hang on. There we go. So when you buy them from Holly, they come labeled. Um, so you got 20 to 22 gauge or 16 to 18 gauge. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, you know, what size fucking wire to shove in there because the big label just, it just told you. So uh, these right here, you have a couple options of crimping these. I'm gonna be honest with you. These crimpers are about 250 bucks They're a pain in the ass. They work pretty good. I mean, well, they work great. They're just a pain in the ass. You, they, you're gonna have to get into a rhythm with these, okay? These are, uh, these are a little tough. Um, you know, for the novice, these are a little tough. They, you know, they just take a little bit of getting used to. But these are a ratcheting crimper, and this crimper here will crimp both the wire retention and or the, uh, the 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 contact for the wire the conductor to the terminal and for wire retention right here all right so this will do both steps in one shot which sounds awesome until you do a couple hundred of them and you realize like these are really a pain in the ass maybe it's just because my hands are really weak now i i, I don't know but these just these have been I haven't, you know, they've been, they've been troublesome for me. Now with care, here they come, right? They're back. You know, we'll put the, we'll put the red one in the front. Um, the economy crimper. So the parodies, again, two different size spots to crimp, two different size terminals. It'll be one of these, depends on your wire gauge and, uh, and whatnot as to which crimper you're gonna use and how it makes, con you know, how well it makes contact. I always, always, always suggest to give all of these terminals that we just discussed, you know, the, just the pull test, you know what I mean? It's, you don't have to try to, you know, pull an engine out of a car with it, but, you know, give them a pull 
you know, pretty firmly and make sure they don't fall apart. Um, there's a few uh, other installers out there that maybe they hopefully watch this video and they learn um, how to use crimpers uh, so that I don't have to fix their mess. That'd be pretty cool. I'm not holding my breath, but that'd be pretty cool. Anyway, there's your Holly EFI pins and again, your economy crimpers, Sergeant economy crimpers cover, cover them. If you want to get into the TE tool, uh, I can, you know, let me know. I can point you in the right direction. Holly sells them. Uh, race spec sells them. Casey looms a whole bunch of different places sell them. So there's that. Now, this is where a lot of y'all wind up messaging me and not understanding the difference between these. So we're going to get into Deutsch uh, connectors, right? So it's, I think it's called Deutsch. I don't think it's douche. I hope it's not douche, you know, cause they, cause sometimes the pins come in a bag. It'd be called a douche bag. So we're going to call it Deutsch. Um, if you can't tell, coronavirus has got me a little stir crazy. So, anyway, three different series Deutsch connectors DTM, DT series, and DTP. Okay, so there's an easy way to remember them DTM, midgets, DT, normal. DTP plus size, okay? Small, medium, large. These are these are very easy to work with if you have the proper tooling. Um, they are pretty much the industry standard when it comes to anybody who uh, wires cars and cares about what they do. So these are they're they're rather easy to use. The differences are the contact sizes, okay? So the DTM uses a size 20 contact, the DT uses a size 16 contact, and the DTP uses a size 12 contact. What that means for you guys is the DTM is rated for 7.5 amps per pin, okay? The DT series is rated for 13 amps per pin, and the DTP is rated for 25 amps per pin. Typically, 18 gauge to 24 gauge here, um, 18 gauge down to 18 and 16 gauge here. You can buy some specialty machined pins that will allow you to put 14 gauge in here uh, into the DT series connectors. They, they'll have a green band on them. Uh, and then DTP is a uh, 12 to 14 gauge. Okay, so the this is all about amperage, right? So if you have to, I, I use these on sensors, DTM, the smallest, sensors don't draw anything. So your DTM is what you should be using on your sensors, your solenoid, like your little air solenoids for the chute release or the boost controller or whatever. Um, and then your DT series, you can use these for injector connectors, right? So like if you were making your own custom harness, you need a 12-way DT series, and again, all these connectors, well, I shouldn't say all these. These two connectors come in two-way, three-way, four, six, eight, and 12. So both of those. Uh, and again, KSV Looms, Race Spec, they sell them. Uh, don't hit me up to buy them. I don't sell this stuff. Uh, I use this stuff. I don't sell it. So don't ask me to, hey, bro, hook me up with this. Don't do it. I don't hear it. I don't sell it. DTM, DT, DTP. DTP connectors only come in a two-way or a four-way. There's also a bunch of specialty with these connectors. That's like a rabbit hole. You can get them with a flange or with the, 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 the boot modification. I think it's E007. So if you wanted to uh, use a, a shrink boot on the end of the connector, and then you can get them flanged, you know, so that this... This would sit, you know, with a flange all the way around the perimeter of it. There's a ton of different options with these. Contact KSV Looms. Contact 
Joel at racespeconline.com. Don't say that that's Baby Yoda because it's not. You're not allowed to say that. Um, and hit them up. Check out their website. Uh, KSV Looms, they're in Florida. Uh, Joel up in Racebec, uh, Race he's in uh, New York. Both of them, I buy a lot of stuff from, from both of them. Uh, both great companies to work with. So there's your breakdown of uh, Deutsche Connectors. Now we'll get into the crimpers that are used for them. So this is where it gets expensive, right? I got you all excited about all these different Deutsche Connectors. And now this is the part that nobody wants to see. So these are a Deutsche HDT-48-00. So the way these work is you rotate the dial, you select what gauge wire you're putting in there, okay? You lock it down, you take your terminal, so you see the hole that's in there? You take your terminal, there it is, right? Drop it in the hole, break loose your break loose your jam nut, right? Spin this up, spin the green dial up, right? And what it's doing is it's running, it's running the depth up on your um, on your terminal, right? And this is a little bit of a trial and an error thing for for you, for the installer, um, or for the user, to figure out your depth for each terminal. I use these for years. They work great. Um, I don't have any real complaints about them until Joel got me on DMC crimpers. For reference, these are like 300 bucks, right? They will do, these crimpers right here will do all, all of the Deutsch pins they'll do all of them okay they'll do the pins for these circular connectors we're going to get to those in a minute they'll do your mil spec pins right so for like mil spec circular connectors they'll do all of them okay they they, they work great all right put these aside we look at the dmc these are uh, af8s okay these are fantastic this is a, a, a the TH1A, right there you see the number, TH1A turret that goes into this DMC, right there, AF8 crimp tool. Uh, Joel has got the, Joel's the man when it comes to these, uh, to all the tooling. He knows every single nook and cranny about tooling. And part of this video, or th this portion of this video really is to try to, um, to help people uh probably understand when you get onto somebody's site like joel's or like ksv looms or you know whatever anybody's site that sells the higher end stuff trying to understand this and and how it applies to you because there's a lot of um uh, you know mil spec numbers and a lot of people start talking way over everybody's head i'm here to dumb it down for you so dmc af8 th1a turret these come in two separate pieces right so you get the, the tool frame and then you get the turret. The turret is interchangeable. They make other turrets. They, in fact, make a turret just like this one, too. That I recommend it. But anyway, if you look, you got a size 20, a size 16, and a size 12. Okay? So the way this works is these, DTM, like we spoke about earlier, right? Right down here. Those are size 20. These are size 16. These are size 12. So if you wanted to crimp these... What you do is you put them on 20, lock it in, select your wire gauge, right? So say, say we're using a 24 gauge, lock it in, take your pin, and drop it in, and you're done. There's no, there's no adjustment. There's no work in a dial like this one over here. There's none of that. There's no guessing. You drop it in, crimpy, crimpy and you're done okay if you want to switch from so like when I whenever I'd populate like a big circular connector with these I'd wind up doing all of my uh, all of my 20 size 20 pins at once and then I'd rotate adjust make it for all my size 16 pins 
uh, or rotate and adjust, make it all from all my 12s. This right now, if you want it to work from the center of a connector out, these are way easier. Open it up, rotate, size 16, drop it in, select your wire gauge, drop it on its place, take your pin, and you're off to the races. So as you drop your pin in, you'll see it automatically adjusts it to the proper height. So these are fantastic. Uh, I'm very happy with these. And to be honest, I don't ever use these anymore. So moving on, we've got just a few more connectors. So bear with me or don't and turn it off. I don't care. Um, we've got, again, we're still in our Deutsch lineup here, right? So like the standard you know, we're going to get to that other stuff that's over there in a second. But we're still in our standard Deutsch lineup here, right? So we've got um, a couple different options for uh, circular connectors. And this is the big popular question that is always raised. Uh, hey, I got a Holly harness and then I want to just cut it in half and shove one of these in here. So these connectors are this series right here that's in front of us right here. These are called HD30, okay? So these are Deutsch HD30. Uh, I, when I use a Deutsch HD30 connector, I buy them from a company, uh, Jared McComb, uh, Maven. So, um, where's the sticker? Right here, here he is. Maven Performance. So, I buy them from Maven, I buy them from Jared. The reason I buy these from Jared is because you can shop around for hours and find this connector for three to five dollars cheaper than Jared. But it doesn't come with this badass aluminum plate. And the reason why this aluminum plate is badass is because if you don't have this aluminum plate, all you have is a nut. Come on, there you go. Normally, if you buy this from anywhere else besides Jared, as far as I'm aware, you would drill a hole in your firewall for that to shove through. You'd shove it through and you'd tighten the nut down on it. The problem is, is that now you've got a hole and it wants to rotate. So you see those flat spots? Jared machines these plates to slip in like so lock in place, can't rotate it, and then you clamp it down. This makes for a lot cleaner and nicer of an install with these HD30 series connectors. These are, these HD30 series connectors are not worth using if you're not buying them from Jared. And, and, and we're gonna get to that in a minute. Um, and the reason being, the reason why I say that, these, if you're not using a nice aluminum plate that's, that's made to lock it in place. Race cars vibrate, street cars vibrate even more. Blower cars vibrate even more than that. Well, when they vibrate, what happens is, if you have nothing to stop this from rotating, you clamp this down on your firewall and you think all is good in the world. And then eventually what happens is it loosens up and it sits there and then this, this eventually will slide out until it butts into the body of the connector. Well, <clears throat> What that can cause is a whole bunch of movement this way that is not wanted nor needed, right? So HD30 series from Jared at Maven, they work great. I look at the HD30 as a, um, an entry level, uh, good quality, you know, well-built, robust, but when you really start getting into the, the, the nitpicky of it, you know, when, when, when you install a whole bunch of different circular connectors and firewall pastors, they, they leave a couple things to be desired, okay? For 95%, for for 98% of you guys, these are great. They come in a bunch of different pin counts and they use the same terminals that we just spoke about, right? We've got size 20 contacts in here. We've got size 16 contacts in here. This is a 16 way with nothing but 12 con uh, size 12 contacts. So for you know 25 amps a pin, these work really good. 
He also gives you a nice uh, uh, pinout sheet for, for each connector so you can write it down and, and you know make sense of what you're doing. So the more pins you get into these, the more confusing they get. All right, there's the Deutsch HD30. And again, we're still using this tool right here. Still using this tool or this one, right? Either one of these for all of these that we just talked about. Now we're gonna get into the mil spec connectors okay so they look pretty similar to this but the mil spec connectors you can buy flanged all right so these come flanged and they um they're a little bit the, the bodies are typically a, a little bit smaller right so these come in shell sizes this is a shell size 24 this is a shell size i, I think it's a shit i don't know eight I think this is a shell size 8 or 12. No, I'm sorry, this is a 12. So this is an 8 position size, shell size 12. So these are flanged. Um, they've got a, a good rubber seal built into them. Easy to read print on the back side of them. So when you, you know, you figure out where each wire goes. Uh, these are what I consider a step up from these. And the big reason for the step up from these is they again are a little bit smaller and they can use these so this is for booting so you guys have probably seen some of my videos or some of my posts on facebook or wherever or instagram uh you see those um those shrink boots those molded shrink boots that go around this they work on these but what you guys don't typically see is that i bring these over to a friend of mine and he runs him on his lathe and he knocks an edge into these so that the lip of the shrink boot can bite into these, okay? Where these are knurled, there's a knurled backside, and it gives it a spot for that shrink boot to fall in here and seal it up nice and tight. So these are a, a step up. They're a little bit more money, not, you know, no bones about it. They're, they're more money, right? So you're into the, the more money aspect of it for sure. But you know, so this is this is what I consider a good, you know, uh, uh, you know, first step in the world of uh, circular connectors, and then this is like uh, step two. These use the same pins, okay? So same style pins as your Deutsch. All this stuff is all the same. They all work with these crimper, this crimper right here, or this crimper right here. It all depends on your pin size that goes inside of these connectors. This is literally a very abridged version of the rabbit hole that these are. These circular connectors are an unbelievably deep hole full of tons of different stuff. That's why I always suggest if somebody's going to ask me what should I do with what, when you figure out however many wires and what gauge you need to pass them through, you need to get onto Jared McCombs site, buy them from Maven, or if you want to get into these and you want to spend some more money, you get with somebody like Joel at Racespec. You send him a message or whatever, call up there, maybe Andrew. Andrew's a good dude up there. Tell him, you know, this is what I got, and they can help you figure out what you need. These are all in. These are going to be, you know, pin count for pin count. You know, if this is a 47 pin and to say this is a 55 pin, this is going to be about 100 and thirty dollars or so like that this is going to be about two hundred and forty dollars or so all in uh so there's a substantial increase in price so you have to make that decision you know get in where you fit in and last but not least is the holy grail which is autosport okay so this is deutsch autosport if you are watching this video and you've listened to me for the past however many minutes, 20, 30 minutes, something like that, talk about all these connectors, and you've made it this far, okay? I don't need to tell you about what these are. If you already know what these are, you probably know more about this than I do. Um, auto sport connectors, top of the line, best out there. They've got, they're lighter, they're smaller, they've got a higher density, uh, pin count per shell size they're flanged they are have a, a uh, remember that shrink boot they've got a shrink boot built in 
Look at the depth difference. If these are the types of things that, um, that you enjoy and like and whatnot, uh, you probably already know all about Autosport. So I'm gonna be pretty quick with it. They use a different crimper. They use different positioners. This is not a, hey, I think I wanna add a circular connector to my car. Um, this is what I'm gonna do. Autosport's not for you. If you say, hey, I wanna pay somebody to wire my race car, and you know what, this connector over here, this one's 150, this one's 250 or 300, this one's 450, make your mind up, talk to whoever's wiring your car. If that's what you want, that's what you want, just be willing to pay for it. If you do this for a living, if you populate these on the daily, you already know how much they are, where to get them from, what to do with them, buy them from Joel. I don't think Joel um, knows how to have a normal conversation beside, about anything besides Deftones or connectors. So call and talk to him and he'll educate you all about these uh, and exactly what you need and what you want, what positioner to use uh, for what size pin. Again, this is top of the line, you know, but not not easily uh, tooled for and used for. So hopefully this taught y'all something about something and uh, you learned about, um, you know, we, we, well, hell, we learned, we learned about that. You know, that don't work. It's just mm -hmm. like scissoring. Neither, neither do these. And, and, and those don't either, you know? So, Hopefully you learned something. See you later.